What's up guys, MC Stu here, and today we are going to talk about which faction, race, and class you should use in Star Trek Online. I guess a better way to state that intro would be what are the differences, because I am not going to tell you what you should use. I will give you my opinion on what I like to use uh, at the end of the video, and uh, you know you can go through this video, take a look at what I have to say about these different classes, and make your mind up for yourself. So if you're watching this video, um, you're either just starting to play the game, or uh, you've maybe played it off and on for a while, or and are, are rolling another tune, and I welcome you. I have quite a large uh, series of uh, beginner's guides and just some basic stuff. Um, and, and I got to tell you, when I make these guides, I, I do you know some homework, and I learn quite a bit because the game's so complex and there's so much stuff there. So even if you're a current player or a returning player, I definitely uh, recommend checking out some of those other beginner's guides because they're not just for beginners. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into it, and let's start with just talking about factions real quick. So the, right off the top, the differences on your factions are going to change the storylines and also the starting... Um, uh, quests or, or uh, tutorial. So all of them are going to have a beginning tutorial that is different and they're going to be set in different places and the missions that follow those at least at the very beginning are going to be different from each other. Now with all of these classes once you get through the tutorial and the beginning missions you're going to end up with finding yourself in the, the main storyline. So after you finish those regardless of what faction you pick everybody ends up at the same place and then you end up playing through the rest of the missions and the missions and storylines that are continually being added to the game. Um, I would recommend maybe not starting with the Dominion though and the, re the reason for that is for Dominion characters they start at level 60 um, and so if you're brand new to the game um, you're probably not going to want to do that. You're going to want to start at just a, you know, a level one character, work your way up so you can gradually get the captain's abilities and all the different things and understand how they all work. Um, I'll get to what I would recommend if it were me starting a new character and I'll get to that at the end. Uh, same with the class and, and the races and everything else. Um, so those are our different factions that you can pick and for the purposes of this video I'm just going to go ahead and um, go with fed here and so we're going to go next now you can pick you know your gender whatever that doesn't make any difference now your individual uh, races on some of these in some cases will make a difference um, with the not your innate captain's abilities but your personal space traits um, and there's a wiki page. Um, I'll link the wiki just down in the description for you guys. It's massive. And if we go through every single different race and all the different things, um, it will be here for days and days and days. So what I would say is just start with whatever you want to, what looks cool, um, go with that. And again, at the end, I'll give you my recommendation for what I would do if I was starting a new character. So once we pick one, then let's just, uh, let's just go with, uh, we'll go with the standard human. And we're going to go next. Now we have the class abilities to pick from. And so I'm just going to give you a quick kind of just my thoughts overview on these. And then we'll take a look in a little bit more depth. I'm not going to go way into depth on each of these because, again, this video would just be days and days long. Um, so the first one we have listed here is going to be engineer. Engineer is going to be good for um, heavy tanks. It's going to be very strong on the ground. Um, it's uh, fabrication based. So you can see in the image here, uh, we have drones and we have turrets. Um, some of these are gonna be innate captain's abilities that are specific to engineer. Um, you're also going to have uh, kits and kit modules that are specific to engineer that only engineers can use. And those are gonna be things like shield gener uh, regenerators, um, uh, health generators, and there's just a whole huge amount of other things that are along those kind of lines. Some of them are fabrication, or um, you can make mines, ground mines to put out, and there's a different assortment of those. But basically, you're going to be making pets, and let's put it that way, pets, or you're going to be making fabrications uh, structures that are going to you know, give heals to um, you know, your, your actual health or to your shields, those kinds of things. You can think of it a little bit more as maybe a support uh, for space, you're going to be looking at being able to bo boost yours or take away from the enemy power levels. Um, that's going to help with, you know, resistance and things like that. 
Uh, they're pretty strong for doing support builds for team runs. If you're supporting like a specific kind of a build, like a directed energy build, there's castable abilities that you can use that are going to help boost your teammates um, that are running those directed energy builds. Um, and I'll just go ahead and rate them. This is going to be number three on my list. And we'll talk a little bit why that is on all of these uh, once we get finished going through them. As an engineer... For space abilities, captain's abilities, you're primarily going to be focused on resistance, shield buffing, power levels, power drain, those kinds of things. These abilities are good for doing heavy tanks or doing uh, support in a way for specific kinds of builds. So if you're doing a support um, for a directed energy build for the team, then this is going to lend itself pretty well to that with some castable abilities like EPS transfer. Um, this you can either click it for yourself or you can target one of the people on your team and you can cast this ability onto them, which would boost their power levels. It would give them better transfer rate and give them a higher ceiling for their maximums on their power levels. So this is really helpful if you're doing competitive runs or if you're running as a team and you are running as a supported player or supporter player, uh, supporting the DPSer on your team. Some of the other abilities do have some damage uh, boosts and also some debuffs as well, um, where you can draw energy basically from your enemies and boost your own output of damage. Um, the, the abilities on the engineer in terms of damage boost are not very good compared to the other classes. Um, this ability in particular has a pretty nice stat on it, but it just doesn't last very long is kind of the issue. Um, so if you're going to run engineer on the space side, you're looking at being able to do tank pretty well. You're looking at doing support for energy weapon builds, those kinds of things. Um, and again, like, like I've said already, all of these classes can basically do anything, but the difference between their, their captain's innate ability, which is what really defines an engineer from a science character or from a DPS character or tactical character, um, are these captain's abilities. And so most of what you have from the engineer is going to be support power levels, shield rotation, uh, some survivability kinds of things that are going to help you in builds that are built more towards that. For the ground, engineers are going to specialize in um, fabrications, so drones, calling in orbital strikes, and um, being able to you know create different kinds of you know drones that carry you or follow you around and do combat, um, or you know building turrets, things like that on the ground, shield generators, health regenerators, things like that. Again, a little bit more of a supported role, although engineers can do very very well in in ground combat. When you mix in things like mines and, and some of the other different uh, uh, abilities that you can slot on engineers. Uh, next, we're going to have the science class or path, career path. Um, these are going to be if you're wanting to do more of you know dots, damage over time, uh, control, uh, EPG, space magic, basically space widget, wizardry for ground. You're going to do more of debuffing, healing, damage over time, those kinds of things. And the specific kit modules and kits are going to be aimed more towards that, um, being able to further those abilities or abilities that are similar to those things that I just mentioned. Um, this is a pretty fun and pretty, it's a pretty, uh, new player friendly way to go. Um, at least in terms of the innate abilities, but at the same time, it's doing a science, especially space build is a lot more complicated than doing any of the other kind of builds that you would put together. Um, and it's not as you know screen accurate either. So if you're playing this because you're wanting just that full immersion like you would have in you know watching the show, uh, there wasn't a lot of anomalies being created by your sh you know by the ships in the show um, during combat and gravity wells and things like that. So um, it's it, it, it's a decent it's a decent class to go with, but I wouldn't build for science to start with if I was a new character. Um, so you could still slot this or pick this one, but I would still be using you know beam or cannons or something like that if I was going to go this route 
But, you know, if later on you were going to go, um, you know, EPG or science build that space wizard, wizardry, if I can get that out, um, then you may want to go with that with the plans of, you know, building into something that's more science related later on as you fully level and understand the way the mechanics work. OK, so on our science captain's abilities, again, it's going to be similar to the rest of our classes where we're going to have some innate abilities that are going to boost science kinds of skills damage output, those kinds of things. Um, so again, we have a science team and this basically falls again right into line with what we would see with the others. So the things that the game focuses on on these classes is going to be a team-wide cast that is going to affect you and anybody else that's in the map with you that's an ally. Um, so for the science team, your team is going to get shield resistance, uh, starship shield restoration, capacity, drain expertise, and control expertise. Um, so this is a nice little clicky if you're running a control build and you're wanting to, you know, use a gravity well or something like that, some crowd control, and you want a little bit of an extra boost on that. It's not a huge boost because this is a skill point as opposed to a percentage to the actual ability, um, but it's still not half bad. Um, this is also going to feature some some other things that are very unique to science. Um, so scattering field is similar ish in the way that um, attack pattern alpha works except this is going to also affect your teammates that are within uh, three kilometers of you giving you a very nice damage resistance and also a bonus damage boost now it's not as big as what you would get from the tactical ability but it's still a nice cat 2 boost and it also affects your teammates around you that are within that range which is really nice we also have some debuff abilities through sensor scan, uh, which is nice. And one of the very unique things on on science class characters is going to be the sub nuke, as we call it. And essentially what this is an interrupt. Um, so this is going to remove all buffs from an enemy. So if an enemy is, um, we see this a lot with like the Borg or some of the other enemies that have, say, feedback pulse and let's say you know you or your teammate are using you know a energy weapons build and you're fully buffed up because it's the boss and you're shooting it a whole bunch and they turn on that feedback pulse and it just about instantly kills you because all of your buff damage is now being sent back to you this is a great ability to be able to use to interrupt that and basically turn that ability off um, and this is the only class in the game that has this built in that is going to give you that ability to interrupt the enemy from any kind of buff that they're using or ability that they're using. So this is very, very nice. Uh, for ground, what you're going to get is, again, debuff, some healing things that are innate, and also damage over time. So science generally is going to be built around either control or EPG. EPG is essentially going to be your dots, damage over time kinds of things. Um, and on ground, this does very, very well, um, just like tactical does. And, and, and I mean, really all of the classes do well on ground, depending on how you kind of want to build around them. So for me, when I'm looking at these on the ground abilities, I don't want to say they're equal because they're different, but they can be equally as effective. I think for new players, science is also a pretty good class to start with um, because of the healing damage over time, things like that, of those innate abilities on ground, make the ground content even easier and funner for me. I like that. Um, for space, if you're going to go in that science direction, having the interrupt and having that, that quote unquote team damage boost is nice. Um, but Again, science is one of those things that's a little more advanced. I wouldn't start with, you know, an EPG build as a new player. Um, I would stay with, you know, something that's more tactical or, you know, based around weapons because um, it's a little bit more complicated. Um, but again, if you were going to say, hey, build a new character from scratch and I want it to be, you know, a high damage science uh, character um, or build, I would still be going with tactical because of all the damage boosts that you get from that. But if you're looking for something that's damaged over time, you want to have an interrupt and a nice, uh, you know, clicky for for a pretty large damage resistance debuff to the enemy. Um, science characters would be the way to go with that. Lastly, we have tactical officers. Tactical officers are going to be, you know, basically everything that it that it does, you know, innately. The innate captain's abilities that are specific to it are going to boost your critical chance, critical severity. Uh, you're, you know, giving you damage boost, um, giving your friends damage boosts, 
things like that. For ground, again, it's going to be those similar kinds of things. You're going to have abilities that are going to boost all of those things that I just said. It, it's really kind of straightforward with the tactical. Um, you're going to have some innate ground abilities, again, that are different, where you can call in you know, security teams, things like that, combat pets. Um, not to the extent that engineers do, but one of the innate abilities is calling in a security team. Um, so all of the things that are going to be special to tactical are going to be specific mainly to boosting that crit chance, crit severity, uh, your maneuverability, as well as your overall damage output. Space abilities, captain's abilities for tactical characters are very, very good, regardless of the role you want to play. Um, I generally roll pretty much all my characters as tactical now. Um, and the reason for that is... And, and this is true with with all of your your different kinds of characters is that your your captain's abilities are not tied to a particular say bridge officer class ability and what i mean by that is if we were to look at say um let, let's just look at attack pattern alpha attack pattern alpha gives you a huge boost to uh damage critical chance critical severity and so if casting a science ability, bridge officer ability over here, um, this boost would also apply to that. And so it does not just apply to tactical abilities. Um, and that's true across the board. If we look at things like scattering field for science characters that also give you a, a good damage boost that is going to apply to all of your abilities, regardless of the class ability on your bridge officer. And so for tactical, even if you are running a science build, all of the damage boosts and debuffs that you would get from these abilities are going to affect that style of build, a science build and the main you know, bridge officer damage abilities that you're using. And so that's one of the reasons that I lean towards this. I do recommend it for newer players as well, um, because it's just very straightforward and it just boosts anything you're doing. So there are some, all of your different classes are going to have a, a fleet ability, um, which is basically a, a team castable it does it by default and so for tactical you have tactical fleet and by clicking this you are going to get all of these boosts for yourself and for all of your teammates so it's it's a good size damage boost at 40 percent bonus which is cat 2 you have uh, targeting expertise we have maneuvering uh, stabilization and weapons amplification so all of these things are going to to boost your entire team their weapons, maneuverability, and overall damage output, regardless of what they're doing. So we've looked at the tactical team, attack pattern alpha, and I'm not going to go through every different little thing here, but really, like I said, with, with tactical, it, it really doesn't matter what you're doing. Um, it's going to work, and it's going to work well. Um, there are some abilities on some of the other classes that are they're very specific, but um, they do fill a role that tactical would not. Um, so again, to kind of just recap without going through all of these, you're going to get damage boosts for either yourself or for your team, as well as some debuff abilities as a tactical character. And it's, it basically, you know, falls in line with what you would think tactical DPS damage output. Everything's going to be based around, uh, increasing those abilities for you, uh, for ground, same kind of thing. You are going to have abilities that are going to boost, your damage output on ground. Um, you're not going to have much in the way of castable abilities or anything like that, but you will have um, you know, security team where you can call in uh, security officers. They beam down and do combat with you. Um, there's other abilities that are going to boost your critical chance, boost your, your team's damage output. It's all based around boosting damage output, doing more DPS, uh, which again, obviously makes sense for, uh, for tactical officers. Now, to kind of recap on all of these or give you kind of just the, the high overview, none of the captain's abilities are tied specifically to a class of ability in the game. And what I mean by that is if you have a, a bridge officer ability, it's a tactical ability, your captain innate ability you click that gives you a big damage boost isn't just going to affect 
a tactical ability. It would also affect a science ability. Um, so if you were using, say, I don't know, a gravity well, and it does X amount of damage, and you have that on a, on a tactical character, and you click on one of those buffs that are innate to your tactical character, that extra damage boost you're going to get is also going to apply to that science ability that you're using. And because of that, it really makes some of these classes... It, if, if you're not min-maxing, it really kind of makes it not a big deal what you pick in terms of, you know, the performance. You pick what makes you happy, what's fun. Um, you know, if any of those things that I went through, and we'll look at these in a little bit more detail here, at least on the space side, um, you know, makes you happy, then just pick it. If you're wanting to not even, you know, not even if you're wanting to min-max, but you're just, you know, I want to do a lot of damage, um, then tactical is going to be the way you want to go even if you're going to do science, um, you're still going to want to go a tactical because all the tactical boosts are going to boost those abilities as well. All right. So to, uh, to finish up here, let's talk about what I would do. And this is me personally. I'm not saying this is what you should do, but this is what I would do and why I would do it if I was starting brand new, but I know everything that I know now. Okay. Um, I would start with a Romulan and I would go with a, um, so the Romulan faction with a Romulan, uh, specifically alien would be the race that I go with. And regardless of the faction you do decide to go with, I would go with an alien and we'll talk about the, these couple things. So first off, the reason I would start with an alien is because aliens get an extra slot here. So I have uh, an elite captain's token used on this. So I, I have, uh, another extra slot. But when you start the game out, let's say that you just went with a human fed, you are going to have a total of nine of these. Okay. If you use an elite captain's token, that'll give you 10. But if you were to say, go again with a fed, but with an alien, you would start with 10. And then if you use an elite captain's token, you would then have an 11. So basically with an alien as the race, Regardless of the faction, you are going to have an extra ground and space personal trait slot, which is very, very nice and helpful, especially as you get fully leveled and start to have resources and things that are worthwhile to put that in. So for the faction, I would go with Romulan. And the main reason for that is if... So there, there are some abilities here that you would get specifically. So if you were a, a Romulan faction and a Romulan actual race you would get improved um uh what is it operative which is okay but I, I would stick with alien for the extra the the main reason to go with romulan is for the bridge officers um so let, let's take a look at that and the reason for that is that you your bridge officers that you have and those are duty officers your bridge officers that you have are going to have uh, built in or innate traits and it varies widely depending on the race and if it's a special kind and all these different kinds of things. So let's take a look. You'll see, I have a bunch of these that are named, named RSO, you know, one and TAC RSO two and on and on and on. Right. So the reason they're named like that is that is superior Romulan operative. And that's a trait that Romulan bridge officers will have. There's basic, there's regular, and there's superior. Now, as any other character, basically, you can only get two of these and they can only be, well, you can get more than two, but you can only get tactical ones from your fleet. Most of your builds are not going to have more than two tactical slots. Some ships you can slot more than that, but there's just not enough tactical abilities to fill it all up. If you're a Romulan character, you can buy bridge officers from the exchange that are very, very cheap. You can also get them given to you through the storyline that will have this trait and any of the classes can have it. So engineers, science and tactical, meaning you can have an entire ship full of officers that are all SROs, as you can see here with my my naming protocol. Right. And so why why that is important is because your your officers in space, all of these innate abilities that they have in sp for space and for ground affect you. So if if we go up into space and we were to look at, say, your crit chance and you didn't have any, any of these officers on there at all, it would be whatever, X, let's just say. If you were to slot one of these characters, your ship's critical chance and critical severity would go up by plus 2% critical chance and plus 5% critical severity. Um, these numbers aren't massive, but these add up. There's consoles that barely give you this or a little bit more. And as you stack all of those, your critical chance starts to go through the roof. Now, when we look at how many I have on here, so I have five, 
um, that is just a ton of, of extra critical chance and critical severity that none of the other factions have access to, to stack up like that. So you figure at five, I'm getting an extra 10% critical chance and I'm getting an extra, what, 25 critical severity. That's huge. Um, that, that is just a massive, massive amount and it gives them a huge advantage over all the other factions in the game. Um, it's one of the things that people complain about quite a bit. Like on my main account, um, my main character is, is a human fed character and I can only have two of these and I am unable to catch up with some of the other people um, that have you know builds that are similar to mine because they just have that extra bump that I am just unable to get. It is not available to me. Um, if you go with Klingon, you can get Nausicans. Nausicans have a, a bonus damage boost. I think it's 2%, but again, you can fill your entire ship roster with those, and that adds up quite a bit as cat 2 damage, uh, which is a huge boost. But having that critical chance and critical severity is just massive. So let's go ahead and jump up to space just real quick, and we'll just look at the overall effect of what we're getting from that. So this is a completely free to play account. I've been working on this particular character for uh, about a little over a year, about a year and a half. Um, so I don't, you know, I have some lobby stuff I got from the events and those kinds of things. But if we take a look at the, the stats on this particular build, we're at massive numbers here for critical chance, critical severity. Um, and a lot of that is due to the fact that I can slot superior Romulan operatives plus on top of that, I have the innate captain's abilities that boost that. So if we start clicking some of those things like attack pattern alpha, you see these jump up even higher. So this is just with one buff going that I'm being able to sit at 65.9% critical chance and 290 critical severity. Those are just massive, massive numbers. And this is on a completely free to play account. I haven't spent $1 on this at all. Um, so by adding up all those little things, if you're wanting to you know, go after a higher damage build, then this would be the way to go. It would be tactical, Romulan faction, alien as your race. That would be what I would do if I'm creating a new tune. This is my newest tune that I have, and that's why I've created that. I take that back. I do have one other tune that's newer. Um, it's a support tune on my main account, and I went with the same thing. Uh, even for the support side of it, um, because the castable uh, innate ability with the the tactical fleet is is very nice for the entire team with the plus 40% bonus damage. You just can't beat it. Um, so that is my recommendation. If you're looking to you know jump in and you know you want to be able to just you know put together a build and be able to mop the floor, there's a lot more that goes into it, obviously. And again, I would check out my beginner's guide to get just all the basic mechanics stuff. If you follow those guides and and you do these things, you will be able to have no problem getting through you know normal uh, normal content's easy but advanced content no problem and participating in um the the elite content as well and that's even on an account of somebody that doesn't want to spend money you can do it no problem uh just by following the basics there so all right, guys. Well, I hope that was helpful. Again, it was pretty high level. Um, I'll link the uh, the wiki page. Um, it's just uh, what I'll do is I'll link the one for the innate captain's abilities, and you can just kind of click through the links on those, and it'll take you into you know all the different kinds of things that each one can do, and you can kind of sift through that if you you know want to get real specific. But again, my recommendation um, is 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 what I stated there: the Romulan alien race tactical. Um, but aside from that. You know, when I started the game, I just wanted to play Star Trek, right? And so don't let the, you know, if you're like, man, I, I don't want to be a Romulan. I want to, you know, I want to be on Fed and all these kinds of things. Then do it. Have fun. Do it. You can always roll another tune later. Uh, do know on Romulan and also on the Dominion, you will reach a point after the tutorial where you'll, where you'll, you'll pick a faction. So you can still be a Federation aligned character like this particular one is, even though it's Romulan. Um, but, um, you do have that choice, but the initial tutorial and, in, you know, beginning missions are going to be specific to Romulan and not to, you know, the Federation and stuff. So, uh, those are my thoughts on that. I hope that's helpful for you guys. If you have questions, put them down in the comments. Um, if you have, you know, questions that need detailed answers, check out the discord server. Um, either myself or one of the members in there will, uh, will respond to you and answer any questions. We love chatting about this kind of thing. That's why we're all here. Um, if, uh, again, you're new to the channel, hit the sub button, ring the bell, do the thumbs up things. Uh, I'd really appreciate it until next time, guys, have a good one. Thank you for watching.
Hey guys, appreciate you watching. Be sure to hit the thumbs up button, ring the bell, and sub to the channel for the latest news updates and how-to guides.